Welcome back to the show. Right now in the state of Washington, there is a record number of mentally ill people sitting in local jails waiting for medical treatment. King 5 investigative reporter Susanna Frame is digging into this issue in a new series, Mentally Ill Waiting in Jail, and she joins me now. I'm so grateful you're here. I work in this building. I know. So it was very handy but you for me. Are, but you are very busy up oh. in the investigator suite, and, yeah. and you are all working always so hard on these important issues that, you know, we see the headlines, but then I love that you take a moment to go, wait a minute, something is, is not right. And actually, that's kind of what led you to delve into this topic. Isn't there a personal connection? Yes. This, this is the first time in my career that I've been led to a story through something this personal. Wow. Um, Will you share? It was, sure. It was, you're the first person I've told this to. No kidding. Well, you're producer. I told you to producer. But oh. anyway, a year ago, uh, this woman was thrown down uh, a steep set of, set of stairs at a light rail station. I remember that. Yeah. It was shocking. And, and the video went across the country. Oh my gosh. We're looking at the video That's right the now. That's the video. And I'm, so we wow. all saw this video. It was horrible. And the man that is pushing her down, uh, allegedly, his name is Alexander J and he has been found incompetent to stand trial, very mentally ill. Anyway, that person is a very good friend of mine. The person who was thrown yes, down the stairs. Yes, she's my former neighbor here in oh my Seattle. Oh goodness. And so I was like, oh my gosh, that's Kim. And so I, of course, was very interested in her case, and I got to thinking, oh, oh and then what happened with the case is he was sitting in jail and he was supposed to be sent for mental health treatment so he could be competent to stand trial, but a bed didn't come available, and months went by, and months. And I was, uh, again, very interested in the case because of my friend, Kim. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, if it's him, if there's one person, maybe there's a lot of people. So I put in a bunch of public records to King County and the yeah. state of Washington and found out that, indeed, we were smack dab in the middle of the worst crisis of this nature ever in the state of Washington, <laughs> with a record number of people just like him uh, waiting in local jails across the state of Washington for mental health treatment that is the responsibility of the state of Washington to take care of. Not the counties, but, but the, the state. state. Okay, and mm. let's just explain to, to folks is that if someone is not mentally competent to stand trial, they, the, the process can't move forward without them getting that treatment to hopefully then make them competent, correct? Right. These are people that have an illness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it, it, it by, by law, by our society, we recognize this is an illness, yeah. and if you're that ill and you can't understand what's going on, mm -hmm. you can't move forward with your trial. It also, in the state, they're not providing them treatment in a timely manner. They have seven days, but Alexander J. in the video there, he's been waiting more than seven months. He's been waiting like nine months, So, and he's not the only one. There's about 800 people that are stuck without due process, like you said, and without treatment, and that is unconstitutional mm -hmm. in this country. Let's take a listen to one of your stories right now. Sir, let me explain my expectations in the courtroom. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna be fired. Over the last several months. Your Honor, the suffering here is egregious. Our cameras were rolling. I have anxiety. As a record number of defendants deemed incompetent to stand trial filed into court. He has now been incarcerated four months. People with mental illnesses so severe, they don't understand the charges against them. It looks to me like maybe you're hearing voices today. Am I right about that? Uh -huh. Yeah. We are asking the court to dismiss this case. We saw defense attorneys routinely asking judges to throw out the charges. The defense is asking the court respectfully to dismiss the charges. Because their clients are sick and languishing in jail without mental health treatment for lengths of time never seen before in the state of Washington. Alexander J. of Seattle is one of those defendants. The amount of time that Mr. J. is being required to wait is barbaric. In April, a judge found he was incompetent to stand trial and ordered he be sent to Western State Hospital in Stillicum to try to get stabilized. The treatment's called competency restoration. The court ruled J. needed to be out of jail and in the hospital within seven days. But he's been waiting behind bars for more than seven months. It's unbelievable. You want it to be done. Wow. And that's Kim. And that's Kim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she's not gotten any closure either. She hasn't, and that's what she went on to say in this story. And she has become an advocate. She showed up to every single court hearing. You rarely see a victim do that. Yeah. And she has done several interviews with the media to get the word out. Oh, my gosh. And she's, she is a nurse. She spent her 
life dedicated to helping people. She's a nurse at Harborview, recently <sighs> retired. And she was on her way to work at Harborview that day. I can't. How's she doing? Like physically, is she doing better? She's doing, yeah, she had broken bones and uh, her, her ribs and a clavicle, but she had surgery and she's doing well. But, Pain, you know, it's a struggle. Yeah, and she shared this with us publicly, so I feel fine saying it. Right. You know, it's, she feels different about the city now. I bet she does. She does. I'll bet she does. Mm -hmm. How bad is this backlog? You, you showed several inmates. Are we talking like 10, 20? I mean, how many? Well, in the, in King County Jail alone, they've had about 100 people for months. Oh, and wow. these are people that, they're not set up to treat. They're not set up to handle. Okay. Much, much of the time, and this is very sad, they need to be put in solitary confinement to keep themselves safe because mm -hmm. they don't know how to, you know, kind of go along with the rules right. in jail. So we did a whole segment about that, about the suffering that is endured by the people waiting and how scientifically it's been proven again and again that you decompensate in a jail environment. You get worse. You get worse, especially in solitary confinement. And we interviewed a, a man who lives in Spokane who spent a year in solitary confinement and just unraveled, just fell apart. Wow. But, but once he finally got treatment, now he's doing fine. So then you hear, you hear the, the attorneys in your piece saying, I, I, please dismiss the charges. But I mean, these people cannot be on their own walking around our community in some cases. I mean, is, what is the risk to public safety on this? That's what the prosecutors really feel strongly about, is that this is a public safety risk. Because, let's face it, judges are in a corner. Yeah. Because they're seeing these people not moving forward with their due process rights. And so many judges have dismissed cases saying, I, I don't know what else to do. I'm, and my hands are tied, right? And that happened in Clark County. So Vancouver, Washington, a judge had a, a defendant before him who'd been waiting, I think, five months for a bet at Western State. And it, it was not getting any better. That he didn't see any sign that he was gonna get a bet. Mm -hmm. So he let the guy go. He, did I say he, was, he had been charged with assault? Uh -huh. This guy was let out. A couple months later, he ended up in Idaho and randomly killed a couple um, who were just, pill oh, he, this, this is him. Um, John Cody Hart. And he was let out. He went to Idaho in this little town called New Meadows and randomly murdered this couple that was really the pillars of this small town. So we went to Idaho and could really feel just the, the heartbreak there, just that this had happened and they were very angry, these people in Idaho, uh, at the state of Washington for not doing their job. Yeah. And then, you know, the fallout happening to their community. I have words in my head I can't say on TV right now um, because it's just so heartbreaking to hear yeah. this story. Um, and that's an outlier though. Let's be honest. Okay, yeah, it, that's an outlier. That's 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 a bit. That's yeah. very people should not intense. take take away the idea that mentally ill people are more likely to commit a crime. That is not true. That is not true. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I and like you said, this is one instance of this situation. So I don't know. I'm sure you are looking into this, but the state of Washington, what do we need to do to make more space available? I mean, is this a well, federal? Or yeah, is this a they're state? under a lot of heat. DSHS, if your viewers are familiar with mm -hmm. the Department of Social and Health Services, it's their job to provide this treatment. And they're under a lot of pressure from a federal judge. There's been um, a federal lawsuit that we have not complied with as a state, mm -hmm. the, the judgment in that suit, for 10 years. And so fines are racking up every day that people across the state are sitting in jail. Yeah. And that number is up to over $300 million which we haven't had to pay all of it, but the bill might come due. Um, also, Superior Court judges are fining the state every day. So all these fines are racking up. Uh -huh. We, of course, will be the ones to have to, to pay, pay that. Yeah. Um, so they're under pressure to build more beds, open more beds, get more staff. I mean, it, they don't have enough room and they don't have enough people. And they're looking for clinicians like everyone else is. Yes. Oh, hey, yeah. This problem mm -hmm. is not going to end soon, but we will, of course, continue to follow with you. Susanna, thank you so much for sure. sharing and for what you do. In, in, investigative journalism is not easy. It is not cheap. It is not for the faint of heart. So we are so grateful for you and Chris and Taylor and 
all that you do in our investigative unit because it really is, it's making changes. It's taking the time to look at the real issues. So we appreciate it. Thank you it. for having me. Absolutely. We'll be having you again soon, I hope. Okay. Um, meantime, hey, thank you for having us. We are so glad you decided to spend time with us today. You can always check our website for more of our content. Uh, you can always send us an email and share your thoughts or if you have an idea you'd like to see on New Day. But most importantly, my friends, I want you to get out there and enjoy your new day. We'll see you next time.